Do you see the role of artificial intelligence from now until 2030, just as an example? It helps mathematics development, yes. but it's far, far away from replacing mathematics. The real important uh, development in mathematics are conceptual uh, outbreak uh, that changes the whole subject. Mm. I don't believe AI can do it, certainly not at this moment. Mm -hmm. I used to say from classical mechanics uh, going into quantum mechanics, it's not something AI can imagine to mm. do because this involves a huge amount of conceptual uh, breakthrough. Uh, there are many fundamental questions need to be sought out by human brain. But Professor Yao, if I could, to also brief you about some latest development in the field of physics, for example. Right. Earlier there was uh, uh, the belief that AI might not be able to understand the basic principles of physics unless being fed with uh, relevant information and knowledge. And recently, though, there is one study published by uh, Meta uh, AI yeah. expert uh, Yang Lequan talking yeah. about how artificial intelligence can develop basic physics understanding through watching videos alone. So, of course, this is only one of those many studies going on and it is yet to be proven. There could be also be a lot of loopholes in any conclusion. But do you see the possibility that what you just said can be challenged in the near future by artificial intelligence? Not in the near future. There are many fundamental questions that certainly need uh, thinking much deeper. For example, at this moment, many physicists are thinking about how to unify gravity with quantum mechanics. Mm. This is a really uh, hundred year old problem. A lot of great mathematicians and great physicists are pondering about. I don't see how AI could help on this fundamental breakthrough uh, to understand the unification. Einstein spent a lot of time to think about it. But AI could certainly, based on what we know already, develop further in the sense that we have limited amount of memory in our brain. There are many data we could not put together, but these are the old data that has exist already. AI could try to learn from them. But many of these are, could be wrong concepts also. Sure. AI may get into some wrong ideas. But in any case, in any case uh, they could only use some existing ideas, and they could not digest some new ideas, which may be inspired by new observation and new experiment, and many different kinds of uh, things that could be totally unexpected to human ears also. As a result of that, do you see the education of mathematicians yes. will need to be adjusted in order to better use the tool of AI for their goods, while at the same time to avoid some of the repeated quote-unquote mental labors as long as AI will be able to handle it? We can use AI for something uh, important, just like computer was start to be used in 1970s and 1980s. It has been very helpful, but they have not changed mathematics uh, own structure. It has been very useful, and I believe AI would be very useful for us. But on the other hand, large part of AI are just part of mathematics. Right. And we could do a lot of things to influence its development. Uh, AI is now depending a great deal on computation power. And I do not believe that is the right thing mm. because uh, mathematics could simplify most of them. And this has not been done yet. And I actually personally was working on some of these problems, uh, which I hope to resolve some of these issues. Mm. Uh, uh, so mathematics is still a key to improve AI. How to translate, uh, Professor Yao, some of the latest developments in mathematics into pragmatic solutions in terms of computational power, in terms of data analysis and collecting, and also in terms of uh, algorithms and etc. that are you know most important resources for AI. Signaling information is one of, those. Yeah. Is one of them, 
when you deal with nonlinear signaling, there's a lot of work that you need to do. First of all, you know how to compute them, and you compute in an accurate manner. And people try, it becomes extremely complicated. It cannot be done without thinking. So we make some advance by finding out some strategy to do it. The strategy depends how you understand what the goal is. And AI learned from the previous master's uh, strategy to do it. And you cannot just always do it because their nature is humongous. Uh, there are many, many different laws uh, governing nature. And we have to find some good way to understand it. And this mathematics will play a role. And so is physics. The other thing is the geopolitical influence and impact on academics. Uh, for example, how much cooperation really can be there for basic scientists to work together. The other thing is uh, with export control, uh, for example, of some of the key uh, components for resources of AI, uh, such as that by the United States toward China. What does that mean for mathematicians and basic scientists like you to take great advantage of the latest uh, tools, most advanced tools for your academic studies? Well, I think it's too bad that many countries are putting a barrier uh, for uh, knowledge to be spread around and they feel they can corner the market by doing that. Uh, but this does not happen in that way. Uh, first of all, most works are published in regular journal, mm -hmm. people can read it, and you can hide it because people are proud of what they accomplished. They would like to see other people yeah. read it. So it's very difficult to control knowledge to be spread in any case. But to not allowing people to learn some subject actually eventually is counterproductive. For example, I was told that some universities in America do not allow students, Chinese students, to study AI. I think this is a stupid movement. Because research is a group effort, not just one or two people. It may be there's one big hero in this whole group, but still what she accomplished was based on a large group effort by several not so famous uh, scientists together. If you cut them off, there's no hero anymore because he's just alone. And America forgot the large number of Chinese scientists who are making serious contributions yes. to these brilliant ideas. And if you do not allow them to learn, they could not participate. If they could not participate, then you lost out uh, your important uh, manpower, brilliant ideas coming from this uh, Chinese researchers. And I, I think just Tsinghua alone, there's a large number of PhD in America who are contributing to AI in Silicon Valley. Absolutely. If you look at OpenAI's team, uh, Grok3's right. team, and also here DeepSeek and many others, uh, almost every one of those have the uh, figures of Chinese uh, or China, uh, you know, Chinese origin. Uh, a talent there. But it's also true, of course, our Chinese teams also learn from American teams. It's a cooperation that yes. make both sides uh, advance in knowledge. And to cut them off artificially is not good for both sides. And I also would like to see many of my friends uh, from America and from uh, China could benefit each other by working together. You are watching my latest interview with Professor Ching Tang Yao, who is now working with the team of renowned Chinese mathematicians to bid for hosting the ICM 2030 in Beijing. The ICM is the International Congress of Mathematicians. It is seen as a grand platform for mathematicians from all over the world to gather for academic exchanges. Professor Yao sees great potential for the development of mathematics in China as the country become increasingly a hub and a nurturing ground for both established talents 
and also budding young scholars. Why is it so important for you and your colleagues to actively apply uh, for China to host the 2030 ICM? Well, there are two sides of the coin. One is from international mathematics unions. They want to encourage uh, mathematicians, young people and all that to actively pursue the subject of mathematics. Mm. And China, on the other hand, has been increasingly uh, actively involved in mathematical research in the last 10 years. Uh, since the last uh, 50 years ago, uh, China sent a lot of students to go abroad. Many of these uh, students graduate from Western well are coming back to China, uh, especially in the last few years, the political situation has been complicated. So many of them feel that they are more comfortable to be at home. And besides that, uh, China has trained their students far better now than before. Uh, we have almost, uh, I would say, the, the world best high school students and undergraduate students in mathematics. Mm -hmm. And they are able to study within China themselves. So a major event like ICM uh, happening in China, or especially in Beijing city, mm -hmm. it would be great encouragement for them. How would you reconcile what you said earlier, your critical opinions uh, over the decades, vis-a-vis -vis what you just described as a China has become a nurturing ground for best talents in the world. What we call in Chinese, uh, the water from Yangtze River flow from west to east rapidly, and we are moving in that way. Mm -hmm. So 30, 20 years ago, we are still slow, but in this last 10 years, mm -hmm. with the great leadership of the Chinese government, great investment into mathematics and basic science, we are doing much better than before. Mm -hmm. And also many uh, Chinese mathematicians who are educated in the West come back and they contribute strongly yeah. to this environment. How would you compare what you call the internationally educated mathematicians or math talent vis-a-vis -vis the so-called homegrown ones? Uh, so far, most established uh, Chinese mathematicians were educated in America or in Europe. So what happens is that they were trained here for high school and undergraduate, but they learn whatever they do in the research largely in American universities or European universities. Mm. So this is not computer homegrown. What we are looking for are trained in China and also do their research in China for the first piece of their research uh, accomplished in China. Mm -hmm. Then we can say that we can compare. Otherwise, we are still learning from America. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we have the means to do it now because we formed this children's college, mm -hmm. which now has about 700 students, and by the mature level, we would have 1,200 students. Mm -hmm. I would say the largest group of uh, student uh, bodies in mathematics alone, and some of them has already accomplished uh, on writing good papers, and now they are PhD candidates. So in a few more years, I would say quite a few of them would be uh, achieving uh, the PhD thesis written and trained by our people mm -hmm. in China. A rising star in mathematicians right. in the world, uh, Ms. Wang Hong, very young talent right. from China, has been working on what you call the Kakeya problem. Right. I understand it's a fundamental issue in yeah. the field of mathematics, and she has been writing a very well accepted paper, now under review, right. but 
that could be a potential leading to some very serious outstanding awards in the world. Um, tell us more about that. And do you see similar figures? As you say, the younger generation of talents are rising up in China. It's a problem on the surface, a question in geometry, more combinatorial way. It was asked, uh, you know, almost uh, 100 years ago, and uh, it was puzzled to many people. But at the beginning, it was considered to be a kind of curiosity uh, until uh, people started to develop it into more mainstream mathematics. Uh, my friend Charles Pfefferman uh, in Princeton, who was also a Fields Medal winner, mm -hmm. uh, made use of it to understand some important questions in Fourier analysis. And Fourier analysis is a very, very important subject uh, for engineers and for physics. It tells you how waves uh, can be composed of some fundamental uh, waves okay. and how they are decomposed into these fundamental waves apparently was, uh, was transformed by understanding this set. And so Charlie makes an important contribution in that way. So I think uh, uh, Wong make a very important step. And assuming it's true, I believe that he should deserve a major prize. Mm -hmm. And this will be the first major prize, international major prize, for Chinese mathematicians. Uh, to get. She was educated from Beijing University, was sent to MIT mm -hmm. to learn from Larry Gouff. But this is a chief and great accomplishment, I would say. But still, we would like to see that some people are trained here to achieve such a major advance. And this is what we are looking for for the next five to ten years. If I could, I've been reading some of the latest interviews you had with the media and also some latest uh, um, uh, analysis you provide for the general public. You seem to argue now with more returnees, yes. uh, since reform opening up, together uh, with the younger generation uh, growing up in China, yeah. Yeah. there's likely to be more uh, achievements in the next five years. But at the same time, you also argue there is uh, the younger generations, th th those are really young, yeah. for example, still in university yeah. in their college days, yeah. plus those in Chinese high schools yes. that have uh, talents in mathematics uh, are likely to be the future banks yeah. of talents in China. So how do you see these different factors work together. But at the same time, with ever more complex international backdrop, as we know, because recently, in recent years, we've seen in terms of technologies and science, there is something called a small yard high fence policy taken by some countries. So what is the mixture of these different factors mean for China? We train high school, even middle school students, young students starting from 12 years old. And we watch them uh, transforming themselves in a fantastic, uh, marvelous way that I did not imagine before. In the old days, they were trained by high school teachers only. And the high school teachers, largely what they care about is competitions and math Olympic and all that. But now we are trying to train them by university professors. Mm -hmm. uh, we even uh, have some academicians to go to teach these 12 year old kids. And I think the result is fantastic. The students understand what is an important lesson, important questions to ask. And I think in a short time, these students will grow and grow rapidly. So I hope to train more of this uh, very outstanding talent to break through our level of mathematics. <laughs> <laughs>